thank you so much, everybody, for, for tuning in to this broadcast. I am, I am so thankful that you're here. You're going to learn something today and be able to apply something that is going to change your life forever. We're going to be talking about casting out the bondage. Casting out the bondage. And so let's go over here to our foundation scriptures over in Galatians chapter 4, starting with verse 28. Oh, that coffee's good. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he was that was born after the flesh, persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so is it now. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, I realize a lot of times we, we take these scriptures and, you know, we're trying to trying to figure out who the bondwoman is, who's the son that's not free, and then who's the son that is free, and, and we're just thinking of being born again and those that are not born again, those that are saved and those that are not saved. But I want to take it a little bit deeper because your life every day is lived through the way you think. This is not referring so much to the world not being saved and you in the church being saved. And, and so the bondwoman is the world and, the, and the, the saved and those are of the church. And, and then we just look at it like that. But there are a lot of people in church who are still in bondage. I mean, a lot of people are still in bondage. I would say most people in the church are still in bondage. Now they're saved. They receive Jesus as their Lord, but they're still in bondage. So let's just take a look at this. First of all, the person that is in bondage is living in a very limited state. That's what it means to be in bondage. They're limited. They have, they're tied up. They're bound. And yet the the child or the son of the free woman is not in bondage. They're free. They can function differently. So what you're going to gain out of this is a way to be free from bondage. A kind of a life that has no limitation to it. Is that the kind of life you want? Come on now, somebody say yes, amen down here. Let, let me see. Somebody say, yes, I want that kind of life. I want a life that's free from bondage. I want a life where I don't have to struggle anymore. I don't have to toil anymore. If that's you, give me a thumbs up. Mandy said, yes, amen. Amen says, so be it. That's the way it is. So let's go over here to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to be looking and getting right now the idea behind these scriptures over in the book of Galatians. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Hmm. When you think of corruption, corruptible, don't you think of something that is like wasting away? Something that has, let's say, uh, death on it? It's corrupted. It's been twisted. Well, there is on the inside of you an, a hidden man of the heart. 
in which does not walk in corruption. But it's a hidden man. It's a man that's free. So there's a hidden man of the heart which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. So you have a hidden man on the inside. Well, there's also a man on the outside. Can you guys see me do this? <laughs> That's the man on the outside. See, you can see that, right? You, you see me standing here. You hear me talking to you. That's a man you can relate to. As a matter of fact, some of you look at me and go, mm. <laughs> See, somebody looked at me at one time saying, Ooh, he's fat. <laughs> and somebody looked at me and say, Hey, he's skinny. Oh, he's lost weight. <laughs> See, there's something you can notice on the outside. And most every person lives their life through this outer man. Now, what I want you to understand is that the inner man has no limitation. And the outer man has limitation. There are things your outer man cannot do without the life of the inner man. If your inner man leaves, this outer man cannot live. I want you to just focus on that for just a moment. If your inner man or your spirit leaves, your outer man cannot live any longer. It'll fall right to the ground. So the level of life and freedom that your outer man will be able to express is totally connected to how much we can live by the inner man on the inside. So if we are in bondage, it's because we're free from the life of the inner man. So now can you see what I'm trying to say? This is not just about the world and the church. All of your situations and my situations have to be dealt with and understood that there's a conflict between the outer man and the inner man. You see that? So the inner man is free. Why? Because your inner man is spirit. That's the real you. This body is just your house. And this house is very limited without the life of the inner man. So one is, is bound and the other one is free. This is the problem all of us face. You think you got, you know, financial problems. <laughs> you got physical ailments. You have all of these things on the outside that show a corrupted type. It's connected to some kind of corrupted system. But the inner man is free as he can be. And the inner man has the power of Almighty God on the inside to the point that God, His Spirit, is there. And there's life there. So, when we're living by the outer man, we are actually living by a corruptible spirit or a corruptible thing. You're guided by your flesh. This is why the Bible says, don't walk by your flesh. Why? It's corrupted. But walk in the Spirit, because if you and I walk or are led by our spiritual man, then the life of that inner man will get on that flesh and change everything. It'll turn the corruptible into incorruption. It'll take the mortal, which means it's corrupted and eventually it'll die, and it'll change it to immortality. Oh, yes, brother. God one day is going to call my name. And if I'm in the grave, I'll come out of the grave into His presence. But you know, those that are alive, their body will change in the twinkling of an eye. And we're looking to God one day to do it. But what if you found out that the life that it's going to take to change your body is with you all the time? 
What if, what if the power of an, an uncorrupted spirit, an uncorrupted thing, could change something that's corruptible? What if life in your inner man could swallow up the death and corruption of your outer man? When could you actually apply the life of the inner man to the outer man? The moment you believe you can. And we've never been taught that we can, so we're always stuck in this corrupted way of thinking, which always leads to death. So, when you're talking about this outer and inner man, well, let's tell you, let's go over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 here. See, you, a lot of times we look in the mirror and we think that's who we really are. But that's not who you are. That's just your house. The real you is alive. The real you is partaking of a life that this outer man has never seen before. Never seen it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Well, I'm going to read from verse uh, 16 all the way to verse 18. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes or is corrupted, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, one th what that tells me is my outward man, if I'm smart, I'll recognize that it's, it's corrupted and it's dying. So I don't really want to connect to that outward man. Well, if I do, I'm only going to go in the direction it can lead me. And that is death. But he says the inward man is renewed day by day. In other words, there's life in there constantly going. It's, it's, it's constantly, it's a dynamo. It never dies. It, as a matter of fact, your spirit will, will never die. It's always going to live. It's always going to function. It always has energy on the inside. So if I'm smart, though my outward man perishes, I <laughs> got that, I ain't going to walk by that, but I'm going to go to my inner man because it's renewed day by day. See, one's in bondage, the other one's free. So again, I want to remind you, it's not talking about the world and the church here. Now that's what we've been taught. The children of the bondwoman, that's them in the world. And the children of the free, that's the church. But there are people in the church who have no idea that they've actually got an inner man and there's life in there. And in the church, they're dying just as quick as the people in the world. Why? Because the people in the world and the people in the church all walk by the flesh. <laughs> now, can, can you begin to see the kind of freedom you have available to you? All you have to do is learn how to walk in your inner man. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the life of your inner man. These are the choices that we have. So, how do we do that? Well, again, verse 16, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. In other words, when you get pressed in on the flesh... It's supposed to point you to your inner man. See, God has given you life on your inner man. Grace, faith, love, peace, all of these things are on the inside. And when you start to feel a press on the outside, God is saying this, turn to your inner man, because all those things were meant to get you out from under the bondage of that affliction. We're waiting on God. Oh, God, help me. Lord, I'm going through this thing. Please, God, deliver me. And God's saying, I already, I'm going to give you everything on the inside. Now, if you're facing corruption here, go inside. Because in the inside, you're renewed day by day. See, this is the reason why in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when Paul had that experience with the thorn in the flesh, and he went to God, like all of us do, go to God. Now, God, please remove this from me. I'm awaiting for your deliverance. And God said, what are you crying to me for? He said, my grace is sufficient, and you are partakers of my grace, so my grace is in you. He said, you get rid of it. <laughs> All that you're feeling in your flesh, you get rid of it. You're going to have to stop looking to your flesh and go to the inner man. That's where your life's hid. 
in Christ. You see that? So all of you are going through something in your life. And I guarantee you, everybody's waiting on God to do it. You're, you're waiting for a word. You're waiting for something to happen. You're waiting for a manifestation. You're waiting for the glory. You're waiting for a miracle. God, do something. So you're going to give your tithes. Maybe, maybe that'll do it. Maybe you'll just listen to more scripture. Or maybe you'll just go to church more. Or maybe you, whatever you might do. I'll pray more. I'll go do some ministry. I'll go do, hoping that that'll be the trigger that makes the miracle take place. And the whole time, God's not looking for you to go preach more. He's not looking for you to go and work ministry more. He's not waiting for you to give more money. He's not, he's just waiting for you to turn inward and recognize that your freedom goes with you all the time. He told me not too long ago, he said, everywhere you go, everything goes with you. Your freedom, your deliverance is all on the inside. Your outward man needs to be freed or set free by the Son of God. Who is that? That's your inner man. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 1 John chapter 3. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He's made you a son, told you to go into the world and show the world how to live by their inner man so your outward man would be made free and the whole world would be able to see the Father in you. They'd look at your flesh and see how free you are. Not just because you got a smile on your face, but sickness can't stick around you. Poverty can't stick around you. Fear can't be around you. Why? Because you're living by your inner man. And you're free from all of that. Now, this is important. So let's go to verse 17. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So your inner man is working the glory on the inside. That's the life it is experiencing. It's the glory in there. And when you have that light affliction, when you have that something coming against you, you have the glory on the inside. He says, run to it. It's a shelter to your flesh. It's a strong tower to your outward man. It's, oh, get this. Your inner man becomes the shadow of the Almighty that your flesh is to abide under. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? See, God's trying to get you to be reacquainted with who you are in His image. Well, I can't wait to abide under the shadow of the Almighty when I go to heaven. <laughs> no, no, no. Greater is He that is in you now. Now get that flesh to abide or be subject to the life of Christ within you. Now let's go to verse 18 here. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. Now that's flesh. Don't look to your flesh. But at the things which are not seen. What is that? That's your inner man, and it's the words that come out of your inner man. It's words of life. It's what your inner man is saying. So you don't look to your flesh or what it's saying or what it's moved by. You look to your inner man. And what is your inner man saying? Well, your inner man should only say what the Father says. And that is you're free, you're delivered, you're healed. You're blessed. You are empowered. You're anointed. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and never again beneath. You're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You're more than a conqueror. Your inner man lives that. It doesn't have to try to live it. It is that. The outward man just is the, the one that doesn't have a clue. Because he's not acquainted with his inner man. He's just acquainted out here with every, the Joneses and the world and what everybody else has and they're trying to live up to whatever minister they can live up to and, and try to equal themselves to their image and don't realize they're still falling short of the glory of God that's on the inside. Because we're so body conscious. But while we look not at the things that are seen but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. In other words, they're going to change. See, this corruptible is going to change when you begin to walk by that inner man. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So your inner man has eternal life in it. And that eternal life is transferable. It goes from the inside and uses the body to express the life. Now, how do you know when your body is expressing the life of God? Because the curse leaves it. 
Sickness and disease leaves it. You see that? No weapon formed against you then will prosper. Why? Because you're standing there looking like a son of God. You're standing there looking as though it's God standing there. Why? Because you're living by the inner man. And when God says that no man can take you and pluck you out of his hand, he's referring to that inner man. Everybody, everybody in the flesh is expecting to die. Everybody in the flesh is expecting to have bad days. Everybody in the flesh is expecting that, well, I'll tell you one thing, ain't nothing ever work out for me. That's all the outer man. That's the flesh talking. Now let's go back here to Galatians. Chapter 4. And let's take a look at verse 30. Nevertheless... What saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. I want to deal with the bondwoman and the free woman. Who is this bondwoman and her son? And who's the free woman and her son. Now you can go and study the scriptures and say, well, I just believe uh, and that this is the new Jerusalem and all of that. This is what he's saying here. The bondwoman that produces the son attached to the bondwoman is a fleshy mind. The bondwoman is the mind of the flesh. It's the thing it's the, it's the carnal mindset that Romans chapter 8 talks about. Let's go over there to Romans chapter 8. And let's take a look at verse 6. Well, I'll tell you what. No, let's go back up there to verse 4. Romans chapter 8, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. In other words, your mindset is connected to what your flesh is revealing. It's the, your mind gets educated by what your flesh is telling it. Your five physical senses... And your mind begins to repeat back to your flesh and give instructions to your flesh based on what your flesh has told it. It's like the flesh gives the information to the mind and then the mind just repeats what the flesh says and that creates a fleshly mindset. That is what the Bible says right here in verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. Why? Because to be carnally minded means you're up under a bondwoman. It means you are thinking of the flesh. You're thinking by the flesh. You're thinking through the flesh. That's the bondwoman that causes the sun, which is a manifestation of your flesh ruling you. The sun in bondage is the person that walks around with a fleshy mind. The bondwoman is the mind itself that's carnal. But we've been free from that bondwoman, meaning God, God has given us the mind of Christ. That's the free woman. That's, that's the, the free woman that causes the Son to be free. What's that free woman? It's the mind of Christ. Now, your choice is to think with the flesh or think with the, the mind of Christ because one's going to determine whether your inner man rules and has dominion or... The other one's going to determine whether your outward man rules. And there's where your conflict is. Listen, friends, listen carefully. Get the devil out of your equation. I've said this in videos before. The devil, <laughs> it, just get him out of your equation. He's been defeated. The situation you face daily is the struggle between your outer man and your inner man. You're either carnally minded or you're spiritually minded. You're either ru ruled by the law of sin and death or you're ruled by the law of the Spirit of life. The law of sin and death comes by the flesh. The law of the Spirit of life comes by your inner man. Now, which one are you thinking by? That's the one that you're living by. That's, th that's, that's controlling your results. 
you have to cast out the bondwoman and her son. The bondwoman is the carnal mind. That son is the, the body that has been dictated to and lived and governed by its senses. And it's, it's the body that says, I'm only going to believe what I see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And we got to cast that out. We've got to stop thinking with a carnal mind so that the son that's in bondage can get out of there and the inner man can begin to speak and re-educate that physical body to learn to walk by the light that's on the inside. Do you see that? This struggle is between your inner and your outer man. This is not even a struggle with God. Some people are so mad at God. And God said, well, I've, I've given you the whole system. I've told you how to live. I told you to walk by your inner man. If you walk in the light as He, Christ, is in the light, then you, your outer man and your inner man, are all going to have fellowship one with another. And when that takes place, then you're cleansed from all sin. And that means death gets off your flesh. But unless you and I walk by our inner man, then you're always going to struggle. And then you're going to go to this prophet and that prophet. You're going, I'm a, this church I really don't understand. I'm going to go to another church and maybe I can get something out of that. And the whole time you're carrying this package with you that has a solution to it. And your inner man has been gagged. Because your outer man is ruling you. Well, you're going to have to learn to just put a, a spiritual straitjacket on that outer man and stop giving him the, the ability to have all the conversation and give all the information. Your inner man knows what to do. Your inner man has the life of Christ. Your inner man is the solution, not just for your life, but for the whole world. But you have to learn to live by that man. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. For we are dead, for I'm sorry, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, when he says you're dead, he's referring to your, your outer man, your flesh. In other words, you're dead to walking by. Your mindset is, I'm not going to walk by my flesh anymore. You're dead to your flesh. You're no longer going to let your flesh rule you. You're no longer going to let a carnal mindset govern your life. So you're dead in Christ, but your life is hid in Christ. See, you're dead to the flesh, but now you are alive to Christ. Christ who is your life. He's on the inside. Christ in you the hope or the expectation of the glory of God manifesting on this flesh. It's all in, the, in Christ, His life in you. So when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in, glorify, uh, in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. In other words, mortify means put to death the argument between your flesh and your spirit. Put it to sleep. Don't give your flesh the opportunity to say, well, that's just not the way I feel about it. Well, preacher, you know you're saying all this, but that's not what my preacher says, and you sit there and get offended. And yet your outer man is ruling, and, and you're struggling, and you're trying to get out of something, but are totally oblivious to the life you have on the inside. See, your freedom goes with you all the time. It's in the mind of Christ, not the mind of your flesh. See, your flesh educated your mind. And your mind just kept repeating back to your flesh, and, and it created this cycle. And this cycle just keeps creating the curse in your life. But when you stop that cycle and you start saying, well, let me find out what my inner man is saying. Let me find out what Christ in me is saying. And then use what Christ in you is saying to you. Use it to shut that outer man up, to shut it down and stop moving by your flesh. You're going to find out that all your problems are going to dissipate. They're going to start, everything's going to start to change. And I'm telling you, if you can make conscious decision to say, no, my inner man is going to stand up and I'm only going to say what my inner man is saying and that's just it. I'm going to use his mouth to glorify the life of God in me. That's what Jesus did. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
He only said what he heard his father. The word father there means source. Christ. Jesus was the physical body, but Christ was the Son of God on the inside. And Jesus had to learn not to walk by what everyone else said, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He just turned inward. And he only said what his source said, his Father, Christ in him. Christ wasn't Jesus' last name. It was the Son of God that was given and put in that physical body. And he lived by the inner man. Jesus wasn't always going to be talking to the Father. We got this picture. He's looking up and praying. To... Father was in him. <laughs> See, he walked in the Spirit like he tells us to. He just learned not to just walk and talk by what he saw. He just looked inward and said what was in here because that's where life was. Your, your solution is the same. The laws of God have not changed. That's really called the, the, the lordship principle. It's the law of lordship. It's where your inner man governs your outer man instead of the other way around. So, you need to understand that. Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. We're right here. Let's go to verses 8 through 10. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. That means just talk in your flesh all the time. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, as putting off the thinking of the flesh, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of, of him that created him. Now notice he says renewed. See, though the outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So again, this is referring to the outer man and the inner man. He's not talking about God here. He's talking about your outer and your inner man. Christ is in you. His Spirit is in you. You've got to learn to live by Christ in you. Greater is He that's in you. It's your inner man. And in your inner man is everything you are looking for. It's life, peace, joy, prosperity. It's blessing. It's empowerment. It's anointing. It's the light and the glory of God with you all the time. It's like having a vault on the inside and you don't know the combination to open it up and get everything you need. But God said He supplies all you need according to His riches and glory by Christ not up there, in here. So he's already met all your needs by Christ. Yeah, but I don't have it. Now you're looking to your flesh. Well, I sure could use that $10 or that $20. I sure use $1,000 this month. <laughs> How long is it going to take for you to get it? I don't know. I've been trying to work some overtime. <laughs> you know. See, now you're looking, living from the exterior, trying to get the solution from the outside. The thousand dollars or the influence and the power you need is on the inside. It's with you. So get happy. You're very wealthy and healthy. It's like you're it's like you're in heaven. You have the life of heaven in you. Start acting like it. That's good news, isn't it? The inner man is created in the image of God and wears God's glory right now. You're crowned with glory. And the more we start living by the inner man, then the life of the inner man starts to overcome and swallow up the death on the outer man and replace it with a life that is renewed day by day. That's what science is trying to do on the outside, but you already got the, the technology of it on the inside. Start living by that. Start living and seeing yourself that way. Until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you.